Now I've done some pretty crazy challenges before, bare fist, five damage, and even poison mist only, but of all those challenges I've done, this one takes the cake as the hardest and the most ridiculous one yet. And yeah, you read the title correctly. One damage per hit. How do I do one damage, you might ask? Well, in Elden Ring, there's an armor set called the Bry Armor, and with all four pieces equipped, you do 20 damage per roll. But if you have one piece on, you do one damage per roll. Now with all of that stuff sorted out, we can start this run like any other. Pick the wrench class, punch Vare, You are maidenless. Maidenless. And get our horse from this lady on Craigslist. Grab every golden seed and sacred tier available to us, take our wondrous physic, and grab the two halves of the medallion and start this stupid run. Only problem is, we don't have the Briar Gauntlets to begin with, and because the gauntlets themselves take over two great runes, we're gonna have to use a different method to obtain this armor. What is this, you may ask? It's nothing, I promise. Just, you know, don't look it up. Now with the Briar Gauntlets acquired, through suspicious methods, all we have to do now is get two passive healing items to make these fights more possible. The first item we need to get is the Blessed Dew Talisman, which heals you two health a second. Normally sounds useless, sure, but when fights are taking hours at a time, it really adds up. Final item we need is the Icon Shield, which those who are familiar with my runs will know that it heals you three health a second while equipped, giving us a total of five health a second of passive regeneration for free. Only problem now is that we're level one, and if you're thinking I'm gonna kill Margit being two hit, you're crazy. Now there isn't many ways we can get runes with our current output, but there is one way that works well enough for now, and no, it's not rolling into the sleeping dragon for 50 hours. In Kaelid, there's a bowling ball that you can maneuver to fall off the edge by itself and get a cool 2000 runes in a matter of seconds. Then going to the grace, it'll respawn and you can repeat this for what feels like forever. Eleven and a half hours later, over a seven day period of streaming and doing nothing, and I have a cool 4.8 million runes to spend. With this, I get to level 133 with 50 vigor, 40 stamina, and 40 mine for later. Mark gets a fun fight, nothing about his first phase moveset confuses me anymore, and it's quite the dance. Now at around 45% health, Marga goes into his second phase. The fight overall doesn't change much, well except for this dumb undodgeable attack he has, but besides that attack, I go pretty much hitless for this fight. Overall, not bad. Time to beat? 2 hours and 20 minutes. With Margit killed, we get the ability to use our second talisman slot, which will be helpful for future boss encounters. Now we kill this idiot, and walk our way through Stormville Castle to reach our next wall. I'm not too worried about Godric, but two hours for the first boss is probably not a good telling sign for the future. Godric is a boss I'm already pretty good at. The first phase is no issue, the only attack that even gets the chance to hit me is his airwaves since they're pretty dumb. Then comes phase 2. Worst part of phase 2 is his dumb fire attack since fire in this game ricochets off every object in the game. Had a few close calls from the fire but ultimately got him first try too. Time to beat, 4 hours and 20 minutes. Our next victim of paper cuts is going to be Renala. There's just no way I'm fighting Radon or Rykar like this. Just imagine that. First, I exit Stormville, grab a few more Sacred Tears, activate Godric's Great Rune for a plus 5 boost on all stats, and make my way to grab the Glintstone Key, and find myself fighting the easiest boss in this entire run. Red Wolf of Radagon has so little health that we can actually see a dent in the health bar every time we roll. But for the actual fight, I got hit quite a lot. I'm 
I'm not really good at this fight at all, but I definitely learned a lot about the moveset while fighting him. Luckily, I barely got it on my first time. Time to beat, 1 hour and 11 minutes. first phase is interesting and different from any boss phase in this entire game. You have to run around rolling into three of Renala's girls with yellow auras until she falls from the sky and you're able to get at most 15 damage in, if you're lucky. The problem is she only stays down for 30 seconds or so, and compared to her health pool of 3,500, that means I have to break her bubble no less than 232 times. And that's saying I get my max damage of 15 during the purge, and usually that's not the case. One thing I noticed is she seems to pick certain girls over others, so I have some sort of correlation to go on to, which can definitely speed up the fight if it works in my favor. Around 2 hours into the fight, I learned a way to get one more extra damage of 16. If I get all my normal rolls, then dodge the aura explosion, I can get one extra point of damage. This only helps so much, but honestly everything adds up at this point. After 3 boring hours, we finally get into phase 2. We enter phase 2 ready for pretty much anything, or so I thought. Renala's hitbox has got to be the worst one out of the, all the bosses covered in this video. Not even half of the attacks actually landed. Besides that, the fight is pretty straightforward, she runs away a lot and that slows things down and the damage from the magic is pretty crazy. Around half health, Renala starts summoning dragons, bloodhound knights, dogs, and giants to make it more difficult to kill her. And it does. These summons slow the fight so much I can't even explain it. Luckily, I used a little trick I learned from my bare fist run to speed up this fight. If you didn't know, you can take Renala to the border wall, which I didn't even know about. And she kinda glitches out. Before she even has the ability to summon, she tries to do it but nothing happens, but she gives me an opening to attack her. The only thing that can really bother us is the Bloodhound Knight since he spawns in front of Fernala and not behind her. After a lot of pain in playing the waiting game, Renala goes down. Time to beat, 5 hours and 2 minutes. With Renala gone, we get our second great rune and the ability to respec our points for later notice. We also get our third talisman pouch from this old lady. With 2 out of 2 great runes acquired, we can now storm the capital. But sadly, a White House official is here protecting the gate. But why would I roll into him when I can use the power of friendship and have my bow friend snipe him instead? <laughs> Ah. Now that we have successfully become an accessory to murder, we can make our way to the Shade of Godfrey. Godfrey is one of my favorite bosses, so a little taste of him mid-game is always refreshing. Luckily, this version of Godfrey has no second phase, so it's just as easy as remembering how to fight this guy. Wish I had more to say about this fight, but there really isn't. Just die! How much- Thank you! There we go! Let's go! Time to beat. 5 hours and 20 minutes. Before meeting with the Omen King, we need to take a small detour to get an incantation called Bestial Vitality, which heals you 5 HP a second for 2 minutes and only costs 18 FP per cast. In a normal playthrough, this incantation is beyond useless, but here, it could help us a ton. To get Bestial Vitality, you have to obtain 3 death root. The first death root is from a Tibia Mariner in Lindell. The second death root is from a Black Knife Assassin in the Death Touch Catacombs. The third and final death root came from another Tibia Mariner, but this time in Liarnia of the Lakes. After collecting all three death root, I can talk to Malakath, I mean Beast Clergyman. With Bestial Vitality added to our belt, we are more prepared than ever for Morgoth and, you know, the guy that comes after him. Ah. Pillagers. 
emboldened by the flame of ambition, have it writ upon thy meager grave. Bell thy king, Morgoth. I think Morgoth is a great boss, great balance of damage, speed, and HP for this point in the game. First phase is pretty chaotic compared to Margit. He starts with all of his phase 2 attacks except the one impossible one, which I'm glad he doesn't have. In my personal opinion, phase 2 is actually easier than phase 1. Phase 2 attack, he gets the blood attacks, give me an opportunity to get a lot of rolls in. But I'll be honest, I'll be he honest, hits pretty hard. Whoa, 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 whoa. A few missed dodges and a grab, and that's hours of progress gone. Luckily, the first time I got to phase 2 was my last. Yes, let's go! Let's freaking go, bro. Oh my god. Morgoth went down as the most insane fight yet with an astonishing time of 7 hours and 23 minutes. After grabbing the rolled medallion from Melina and taking Lionel's armor for a huge physical boost, I make my way to the fire giant. Well, we made it to the only boss that I have no valid reason to skip, yet have all the reasons at the same time. 43,363 health, and I do 1 damage. In Phase 1, the Fire Giant has very basic swings with his shield, dumb foot stomps, and plenty of him getting stuck on objects. My first attempt at this fight ended at only around 3-4 hours and made me take a 3 month break from this challenge. After feeling ready, I decided to give it another try. But before we do that, I think we're a little underleveled for this fight. The original rune strategy takes way too long and is way too boring, so instead I have a better idea. Since we have Godric's great rune now, we can talk to Varre, who seems to forget we punched him a few months ago, and do a few medial tasks for him. We invade three worlds in which I actually try to get a kill with one damage, which is pretty funny, but obviously it didn't work. Then I got Maiden Blood from the church and got my finger cut off and boom, now we have access to Moog's palace. Here we can use this rune glitch which works by getting out of bounds and falling off a cliff, and after a minute or so we get a healthy 120,000 runes. I do this for around 3 hours or so and I end up with a very well balanced 62 million runes and get to level 293. With that out of the way, we give Fire Giant another try. To mention something, at the start of this fight I actually do 2 damage from the weak spot, and once this band-aid breaks at 10% I do 3. Even with this minor damage buff, it takes an hour just to reach phase 1.5, Overall this phase isn't too difficult and after 6 hours and 50% of Fire Giant's health slowly chipped, we reach phase 2 for the first time. Good news, 10% of the Fire Giant's health gets removed to phase 2. Bad news, we're doing 1 damage. Now in this phase, he has a lot of damaging moves, especially the dreaded Fire Breath move which defies the rules of gravity completely. Worst part of doing 1 damage is how long this is going to take. I calculated that every hour I was doing around 5% of his health bar, meaning this fight would take over 12 hours to finish. Luckily from my Fire Giant Bare Fist fight, I'm really good at this fight so dodges were pretty much ingrained in my mind. Not much, but this is what efficiency looks like. These fights are just that long. 5 hours later. But no, actually 5 hours later. 20% left to go. Everything is going to plan, until I make a fatal mistake of being too tired and not seeing an edge. And just like that, 11 hours of my life is gone. I really wanted to quit. I am so done, bro. But I couldn't. I've already gone this far, I can't back out now. So even though that last one hurt, I gave it another try and 8 hours later, the last thing I could have thought of happened. As if the fire giant thought of the only way he could possibly beat me. A terribly made arena and a crash. This one really pushed me, but I know it's possible. I just need to grind it out. I decided a few weeks later I'd give it one more try. If I succeeded, then great. 
but if I failed, this little experiment of a challenge is over. Yes! Let's go! Let's go! Oh my god, guys. Oh my god. The world must have better plans for me because somehow... Mate. I did it. 14 hours and 27 minutes. This fight took my all. I hope you guys really understand that. Enough of the sob story. Let's commit a cardinal sin and wake up in Farmazula, a place I didn't think I could get to legitimately in this run. We can have our short-lived victory, but we all know what boss comes next. As someone who's done this bare fist, I can't see anybody ever being able to do this. I don't even know what to write here in my script. The fat one rushes you and the skinny one hides in the background. It's impossible, there's just no way. So yeah, we're skipping with a zip right to Malakath. But before we do that, we need to get the best defense talisman in this entire game, the Dragoncrest Great Shield. To do that, we need to make our way to the Hallowed Tree, but there is no way I'm fighting Commander Nile like this. Luckily, we can use this jump right here in a special way, using the same method to get runes by deloading the map and effectively killing Nile from fall damage. After that, I light the statues and get myself into the Hallowed Tree without needing to kill Nile in the conventional way. I run my way past a bunch of overleveled enemies and make my way to Loretta's Fog Gate. As much as I'd rather not use a lot of glitches in this run, we don't really have a choice. Loretta's damage is high, and her HP is around 20k, and I'm already pretty bad at her as it is. Luckily, with the help of Ingenuous's Clown's 20 damage video, I learned I can use a skip to bypass Loretta right past her, and the Dragoncrest Great Shield Talisman is in my possession. It adds 15% physical damage negation, which with my armor combined, I get a total of 47%. Now with all our talismans in play, we can take on one of my favorite bosses in this entire game. Oh, death. Become my blade once more. Malakath. Laugh it up, but I mostly struggle with the first phase of this fight, unlike the other way around. I got hit quite a lot since I haven't practiced this phase much, and all of his attacks are super fast. Luckily, I was able to heal myself with Bestial Vitality and got better and took less hits over the first phase. The best part is I had a crazy average of 20% down an hour, making this fight way shorter than others. Two and a half hours into phase one and we get to the true challenge, phase two. Phase 2 is so cool, Malakath is fast, strong, and does crazy damage. I'm really familiar with this phase from my bare fist encounter with him, so I just did what I was doing before except rolling into him when I had punishes. Wish I had more to write about this cool fight, but it was pretty easy honestly. Somehow, against all odds, we made it to the end game in this insane run. We could celebrate until I realized Gideon is next, aka Hell itself. But before we see the torture that comes with that, let's kill this rune bear for the spell drag talisman for a 13% magic damage resist. Gideon, the all spamming, is the biggest roadblock in any low damage challenge run. Now, I'll be honest, I barely spent any time on this boss, and I know for a fact this boss is not possible. With his 1 billion damage and spells he constantly throws at you, while well, also the fact that at half health he heals, I just don't see anyone able to do this. I wish I didn't have to skip, but I'll leave this fight to Geno. With a quick zip into Gideon's arena, we're on to an actual fair boss. Upon my name as Godfrey. Godfrey is a great boss, 
Just as Goldfree, I know his basic attacks well enough to survive the onslaught. At 90% health, he gets the Volcano attack, which gives me a moment to use Bestial Vitality and take a breather before getting back into the action. At 70%, he gains the Shockwave Stomp attack, which now hits the entire arena, which I think actually makes it easier to dodge since sometimes you can get hit if you dodge into the Spike Stomps. Overall, these two changes actually make the fight easier, not more difficult. Sadly, this boss is very inconsistent when it comes to phase transitions, and of course we get unlucky and he goes early at 60%. The bad part about Horolu transitioning early is it takes 5% an hour instead of Godfrey's 10%. This was planned, but now we have to waste an extra hour getting to where we could've if he had gone at 50. Godfrey down, that means we're on the last pair of bosses. This challenge just shows that you really can do anything. Before we take on the last pair of bosses, let's go back to Mogwin Palace and get the Hallowed Drake Talisman plus two for a ton of holy defense. With that out of the way, let's finish this before the script gets too long. Well, this is it. We actually made it. I really love this fight. The music, the atmosphere, the boss itself. It always felt so epic. I feel like it should be the last fight. Phase 1 wasn't that bad, just the regular Radagon attacks, but Phase 2 is a whole different beast. The constant spell spamming and the fast teleports into Hammer Swing took some adjusting and definitely slowed the fight down, but in retrospect, this fight was quite quick. I think the main reason is because Radagon is just go 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 the whole time, allowing me to get massive amounts of damage in. In the end, it wasn't bad. First try, first half. The Elden Beast attacks aren't very hard to dodge in my opinion, and Radagon is the true difficulty of this dual fight. Honestly, not much notable except for the fact that it took forever and then halfway dumb Elden Stars came out, but this fight really showed how easy a fight can be when you come prepared for it. Let's go guys, let's go! Oh my god, we actually did it. We actually did it, man. After 15 grueling hours, the Elden Beast was defeated. To everyone who saw this video, thank you for watching and please consider subscribing and leave this insane video a like and even comment some challenge ideas you have below. Even with all the pain, it was fun. I learned the bosses and had to play better than I ever had. With that, I say goodbye, have an amazing day, and finally, 0.1 challenge next.